Hi, I'm Mariella and today I'm going to be talking about superannuation, which is a very riveting topic, I know. Um, but I hope that you stay tuned and you find this interesting and informative and something that you can kind of take forward as, as you go about thinking about how your personal uh, and collective actions can really impact uh, climate change and building a better future. Before I get into that though, um, I'd really like to acknowledge country, acknowledge the country that I'm on and invite you as I'm doing this to think about the country and the lands that you're on. So I invite you to take your shoes off, close your eyes, bow your head and just think about, you know, where, how you got to where you're at and, and what those lands uh, that you're on mean to you. This is a virtual conference so obviously we're coming from everywhere, an array of lands across these lands now called Australia. Personally I'm on Gadigal land in the Eora Nation. I was born and raised and now live and work and thrive on Gadigal land uh, and it's important to acknowledge that this land is stolen land um, and that the implications of being a settler and someone on unceded sovereign land, uh, those implications are very real and um, you know there's something that I think we need to grapple with and, and act on and address as we go forward in, in our daily lives as individuals and as communities living on unceded land. I'd like to acknowledge uh, Gadigal elders past, present and future and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are tuning in today and as I said acknowledge that this the land um, on which I'm on and those lands across Australia they've never been ceded, sovereignty has never been ceded, this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. So superannuation, <laughs> very glamorous I, I know, I'm sure you're all thinking the same thing. Um, as I said my name is Mariella, I'm 23 and I am the social media specialist at Future Super. I think it's important to name my age because I didn't know at all really what superannuation was before I started working where I am now. So Future Super is uh, an ethical superannuation fund. We were started about six years ago and ethical in this case means that we have really strict screens around the companies that we do and don't invest in. So we don't invest in companies uh, specifically that are involved in indirectly or directly in the burning, mining or extracting of fossil fuels. That's our kind of most comprehensive screen, but we also do have screens around making sure that none of our investments are involved with gambling. So we don't invest in Woolies, for example, uh, armaments and militarism, nuclear weapons, child labor or exploitative labor, modern slavery or tobacco. In terms of the things we do invest in, we look for companies that at bare minimum do no harm. Uh, and even better than that, we look for companies that have positive social and environmental impacts. So that might be investing in renewable energy assets or social impact bonds that look to increase affordable housing or accessible housing or uh, job and, and education opportunities for disadvantaged young people, that kind of thing. So as I go forward, I'm kind of want to be talking about superannuation and what it means for us as individuals, but also what it means for us as, as communities centered in Christ. Um, and to do so, I want to begin with a little, a little rant about capitalism and money and Christianity and faith and community. And um, before I begin that, I really want to make it clear that none of this is personal financial advice. In fact, it's illegal for me to give that. So please be assured that none of this is personal. It's all very general in nature. Uh, and if you're thinking about changing your superannuation or what superannuation means for you, I recommend thinking about that for yourself, doing your own research and talking to a financial advisor if that comes to it. Um, so we don't talk about money a lot. We don't talk about incomes, super, personal finance, investments. As a society, we also really don't talk about it in church communities. We do talk about tithes and giving, but we don't talk, as I said, about income, what we make, what we spend our money on, where we spend it, um, and all those kinds of things. I think there's a bit of shame and guilt tied up in that misappropriation maybe of uh, verses that talk about not letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing or vice versa. But it's also part of the fact that as a church, as a Western church, we are rooted in a culture of hyper-individualism and we're under a capitalist framework, right? And the biggest part about capitalism, the biggest lie that it's sold us is that money is a personal thing. That it's taboo to talk about money with your community, with your people, because it's taboo and it's personal and it's about you. 
When we look to who we base our faith on though, Jesus, Jesus talked all the time about money. He had parables about money. He stood at the temple donation box and watched as people came and gave and commented on it. Jesus moved money out of the personal and the private and the hidden and the, the obscure to, you know, part of the community. It had impact. It had meaning. It wasn't good to hoard, but you could spread it. It could be something that was really valuable, that gave valuable to, that gave value, sorry, to, to people with less or to the church or to God. Jesus made talking about money public. And so why, why don't we talk about it now? I think there are a lot of things tied up in that, a lot of uncertainty and shame and guilt, as I mentioned. But if we look to Jesus, we see that money can actually be a really valuable element of communal life. So as I go forward, that was my little <laughs> spiel over, hope you enjoyed it. Um, but as I go forward, I want you to think about some questions. Um, you don't have to have answers to them, obviously you can't say them back because this is a pre-recording. But I just want you to think about them as we go forward. Um, so the first is, do you know what super is? Don't feel bad if you don't, because honestly, before I started working at Future Super, I had no idea. I kind of thought maybe it was a bank account, maybe it was money. Uh, and you know saved in cash but when I started working I realized superannuation is an investment so your employer pays you money on top of your salary and it gets put into an account that account doesn't just accumulate as cash it actually gets invested so your super money goes into all sorts of companies with the aim to increase it for the time that you retire my second question is do you have super generally if you're a work Generally, if you are a worker in Australia, you will have super. Uh, a lot of times it's quite tricky if you work casually or work for yourself uh, or work ad hoc, but you should have super. And do you know where your super is? There are kind of two options with that. You can choose the, when you start a new job, you can choose the superannuation that your employer has given, or you can choose to elect a fund of your own. And do you know where your super is invested? Do you know what it's invested in? We've built a world where money equals power, which personally I don't think is ideal, um, but it is the reality, it is the current state. It's likely that apart from a mortgage, if you get one, your superannuation will be the biggest asset that you own in your lifetime. And that superannuation, that's your money. And that's your power. And your super unlocks this opportunity for you to put your money where your mouth is, for you to align your values with how and where your money is spent. If we agree, even if it's not ideal, that the world that we live in now means that money makes it spin around, money decides where the power is, how it goes, then together we can actually use our superannuation to start spinning it in the right direction. I have two kind of facets of this to explore um, for you to kind of start thinking about your super differently, to start thinking about it at all, um, and for you to get comfortable talking about it. So the first is, where is your super going? A really shockingly small amount of Australian superannuation companies disclose their investments. Uh, I'm talking shockingly small, 12%. So it's likely that it's possible rather, that you are in the 88% of funds that do not disclose their portfolios, their investments, where they put their members' money. And a lot of those investments are in things like the big four banks, fossil fuel companies like Rio Tinto and BHP, who have recently been in the news for some really shocking and abhorrent attitudes towards blowing up, destroying, or planning to destroy sacred Aboriginal land for the sake of expanding mines. Uh, it also is going into other fossil fuel companies, armaments and military, militarism, gambling, like Woolworths, uh, child slavery, uh, and also a whole range of really unideal and like unchristian things, right? So I think that's the first step. If you know the fund that your superannuation is in, but you don't know what exactly your money is going towards, do some digging. Two resources that are really great in terms of looking at superannuation from a climate perspective uh, and other, you know, faith-based or morality-based or personality-based values you might have, Market Forces, then marketforces.org.au, and also RIA, 
RIAA, which is the Responsible Investment Association of Australasia. They both have really great resources. But the other thing you can do if you really want to know is you can email your fund. Just ask them what you're invested in. And if they don't tell you, they don't tell you. You can decide then to switch to a, one, to a fund that does tell you. Or if they do tell you and you're not into it, you can ask them why. The second step is exploring what bringing personal finance and money into your community looks like for you. The lie, as I said, that capitalism and therefore super funds have told us is that your superannuation only affects you. And sure, when you retire, that money that you have in your superannuation account is for you to spend, for you to live on. And that's yours, right? But in the meantime, it's invested. Your super, along with thousands of other workers, it's invested into all sorts of companies that build not only the world of the future, but the world that we live in today. There is $2.9 trillion in Australian superannuation. That is a lot of money. That is more money than I think I, and I'm assuming the rest of us, can comprehend spending or even like what investing that kind of money looks like. But it breaks down, right? So the average superannuation fund balance in Australia is 30K, $30,000. To me, that seems like a lot of money. I'm definitely not there. And for many of you, that might be the case as well. But the fact is that super, right, is accumulative. My account with, I don't know what I have in it, 3K, 6K, 10K, I don't know. But that account paired with my sister's account, with my parents, with my friends, with my comrades, with my colleagues, that is a lot of money. And that money, as we know, in this world, is our power. And that kind of power is something that you don't get in a lot of other places, right? Like, thinking about that kind of power, there's just nothing like it. Superannuation in this, in this respect is really unique. So if you combine your individual balance with your friends, with your colleagues, with your peers, with your church communities, with your small groups and your youth groups, that has a bigger impact than you think. And the movement of that, that superannuation balance out of companies and industries that are destroying our collective future and into companies that are looking to build a positive and equitable one, that is a real move of power. It's a really powerful action. And it means that the world that your super and our super is building is a livable one, an equitable one, and a safe one. So my second, my second action for you is to talk to your friends. Talk to your church communities, your youth groups, your fellowships, your small groups, your Bible studies, your friends, your family. Let's just start a conversation about where our money is and what it's doing. Because we are called every day into love and community with one another and with our neighbours. So... Why let capitalism and individualism affect how that community looks? We can and we should talk about money and finance because it's not personal in our world right now. It's just, it's power. And we can make that power collective and we can finally hold money to account and use it to be, yeah, let it be wielded in a way that can bring about a better world, something better. And hopefully that something looks a bit like justice. So there you have it, my connection between personal superannuation and a more just world. It's a bit of a roller coaster to get there, but you can get there. And I encourage that you do so. So look at your superannuation, where it is, what it's doing, ask questions to your fund and to your friends and your family and your church about where your money is and make Move money from the private and the taboo to the communal and the collective and the excitement and the building of a future that we all deserve. Thank you so much and blessings to you all.